Hey, Life Group family. Welcome to week five in our series, Signs, Healings, and Miracles, where we get to talk about perseverance. Everybody's favorite thing to talk about. We heard Pastor Joe teach us today about our call to heal the sick, how every one of us has a calling on our lives to go out and live like Christ, to represent Him well, and that includes His healing ministry. I would love to say that this ministry is 100% successful all the time. The reality is that sometimes healing doesn't happen. Sometimes it happens in part, sometimes it happens in whole, and sometimes it never happens at all. But if we allow the suffering or the agony of defeat to bind us and remove us from healing, we are removing our own connection to a huge piece of who Jesus is and what we co-inherit with Him from Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Dr. Randy Clark tells us a story in the book Power to Heal, where he preached a sermon and read some scripture in that sermon that included a verse about healing the sick and raising the dead. He got really embarrassed about that part as a Baptist pastor who had never experienced those things and lowered his voice and kind of stumbled over it a little bit. But guess what the Lord told him? God told Randy Clark, don't you dare lower my word to the level of your experience. Don't you be an experience-based preacher. Do not create a theology based on your experience of not seeing the dead raised or people healed. Preach my word and let people's experience rise to it. So, in obedience, he preached a sermon based on scripture and the testimonies of others who had experienced those things, not based out of his own experience and seeing victory in those areas. And there was a man that was that was there during that sermon who took what he had learned, and two months later when his son died in a car accident, he remembered that teaching and used those principles to raise his son back to life. You never know what God's going to use you for. Our responsibility is simply to preach the Word of God, and that Word is living and active and makes a way where there was no way, and it changes things. You see, experience-based theology will never survive the agony of defeat. When we base our theology entirely upon what we see or do not see in our personal experience, defeat becomes stronger than the truth of God's Word. Every defeat subtly adjusts what we believe about God and His truth if we allow it to. We no longer uphold the undiluted truth of God's unchangeable standard. It allows offense to creep in against God. It starts to erode our view of His unfailing goodness. It would have us believe that He's good in some ways, but not good in these ways. But that is not the truth. For you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We cannot let our experience with defeat sideline us from what Jesus has told us to do, from what he modeled for us with his own healing ministry. I love the analogy in the book. It puts it in terms of evangelism. So if there was an evangelist that went out and evangelized, yet came back saying, every person I've evangelized to has said no, and they haven't been saved. Therefore, evangelism is probably not a valid ministry, and it's probably not God's will to save people. No, that's not how this works. That's not true about evangelism, and it's not true about healing. Yet we allow the same thing with healing ministry in our own lives. Well, God, I prayed once or twice for something that I really cared about, but I didn't see results, so it must not be real. It must not be your will, and you must not be good. Dr. Randy Clark shares a painful truth. He says, I truly believe that I have prayed for more people that have not been healed than anyone reading this book. That's scary. And yet, thousands have been healed when he prayed for them. He doesn't share this truth lightly. It doesn't really build faith for healing. But it does help Christians, those of us called by God to heal and represent his healing power, continue to press in for victory in healing. When he was first learning about healing, he was told this, Do not quit or say you did not get anything until you have laid your hands on 200 people and you yourself have prayed for them. If you will do that, I promise you will be hooked for life because you will see people get healed. Todd White, another famously anointed healer, said he prayed for 2,000 people before he started seeing healings relatively consistently. Let me just say this. Even if it is one, just one, out of 200 people, out of 2,000 people, just one person that you get to see supernaturally healed and restored, new life, new hope back in their circumstances, radical change, just one time. Would it be worth it? I think so. In fact, the suffering, the picking up of our cross daily actually makes the victory all the sweeter. 
Guys, I've been there in my own life, suffering under massive amounts of pain with no hope, struggling to make it through the next five minutes, much less one more day. I've been healed of a brain tumor, of weirdly combined multiple types of arthritis that all started at once overnight, and even for little things like headaches or smashing my finger in the door. I've also suffered through long periods of pain and hurting and immobility where I couldn't move, where the world was crumbling around me, my marriage was falling apart, and I couldn't do anything about it no matter how hard I prayed or believed for my circumstances to change. But if we allow our experiences to cause us to step back from healing from God, we will never see the sick healed, the dead raised, the circumstances changed. Do not deny the sick, the hurting, and the broken the chance to be healed because you have experienced defeat. Press on. Persevere. Go for it. Take one more chance. Dr. Randy Clark says, If I had given up in defeat, I would not have been able to write this book and teach about the agony of defeat, but also celebrate the thrill of victory. He wouldn't have gotten to participate in the healings he has seen come to pass if he didn't press in for more through the midst of defeat. Guys, let me be clear. This does not mean that the religious mentality of I'll just pull myself up by my bootstraps, keep trudging forward uphill both ways through the snow is what I'm talking about. Perseverance, sometimes called long suffering or patience in some translations, is actually listed as a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, long suffering, perseverance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit in us. I am so glad that perseverance is a fruit of the Spirit and not a fruit of Chris. I am so glad that it's not me that has to come up with the patience and long-suffering, but it's the Holy Spirit in me that empowers me with that fruit to press forward. It is by God's power, not by ours, that any of this is possible. If you want more healing, the Bible says we must pray for two things. We must pray for more power, and we must pray for more compassion. If we get power but don't have compassion, our ministry will not reflect Jesus. Over and over again, Jesus was moved by compassion for people and the result was healing. We need both God's heart and God's power to truly represent Him well in the healing ministry of Jesus through us. Please pray with me. Father, I ask you to keep me humble, give me your compassion and your heart for the lost and the sick, and finally, give me the power of your anointing to do something about it. Amen. Exodus 3, 7 through 10 says, I have seen the affliction of my people, and I have heard their cry, and I have come down to deliver them, and so I am sending you. Are you willing to pay the cost of defeat and suffering to receive the anointing, to receive more? to serve God and bring healing and miracles to those in need. God's anointing is a call to radically follow the model of Jesus Christ. It is a summons to pick up His cross, follow Him, love as He loved, to feel as He felt, and to cry out for Him to anoint you with power for the task at hand. Please ask Him for a fresh anointing, a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit power. We should be expectant of a lifetime of increased anointing, increased fellowship with the Spirit. As deep cries out to deep and we move from glory to glory and we see healing after healing, as we become more like Him and let His truth lead, lead our experience, not the other way around, we will see His outpouring of love and that very same way and truth and life set us free from every bondage, every sickness, every disease, every hurt, every pain, because He loves you and has called you to heal and be healed, to overcome and be more than an overcomer. Do not give up. Coming up this Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, the 18th through the 21st, is the City Quake Conference right here at Mount Hope Church. Dan Moeller and the other speakers will teach and impart to us signs and wonders and healing and miracles and then empower us to go out and do the very same things in, with intentional time built into the conference to go out and practice what we learn. Please join us for as much of the conference as you are able. Registration is required. You can sign up at the link below. The evening sessions are free, but still require registration, so don't forget to sign up. I can't wait to practice what we've been learning with you. We'll see you there.